The book of 1 Kings chapter 22, the first several verses in here goes, And they continued three years without war between Syria and Israel. And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat the king of Judah came down to the king of Israel. Now we know that at this time Israel had split into two, into two separate nations, uh, Israel and Judah. So let's see verse 3, And the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye that Ramoth and Gilead is ours, and we be still, and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria? And he said unto Jehoshaphat, Wilt thou go with me to battle to Ramoth Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as thou art, my people as thy people, my horses as thy horses. So a little bit of backstory here. The king of Israel is a wicked person. And the king of Judah, Jehoshaphat, is a godly man. So that'll be important information for a little bit later on in the story. Verse number 5, And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about four hundred men, and said unto them, said unto them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. But watch this, verse number 7, And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? And the king of Israel tells Jehoshaphat that he don't like the one prophet that's a prophet of the Lord, but they called for him anyways. Verse number 11, And Zedekiah the son of Shenanah made him horns of iron, and he said, Thus saith the Lord, With thee shalt thou push the Syrians until thou have consumed them. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord uh, shall deliver it into the king's hand. So we find all of these prophets here, 400 people, Telling the king, go do what you want to do. Go up against Ramoth Gilead. The Lord will give it unto you. Verse number um, uh, 17, however, is, is this prophet of the Lord, Micaiah. It, this is his prophecy. Now, he's hooked up right. These other people are lying. Verse number 17, And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return every man. To his house in peace. So in other words, Micaiah prophesied by the word of the Lord that if uh, Ahab were to go up against uh, these people in battle, that not only would they lose the war, but also it would cost Ahab his life. This is in direct opposition to what the other 400 people were saying. We find 400 people saying one thing, but one little person comes up and says something different. We find out from this passage that it does not matter at all what the 400 are saying. Because they're not telling the truth. Even if they agree on what they're saying, 400 people agreeing on the same thing, it is still not the truth. What the one person said that had a word from God is what they should have listened to. So, let's look at this, verse number 20. This is, uh, well, let's go back to verse number 19. This is Micaiah talking again, and he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner, and another said on that manner. And there came forth a spirit that stood before and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit. In the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go uh, forth and do so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. So we find out the reason why all the 400 prophets are speaking falsehoods. They're lying. And we also find out that this one man has the genuine word from God. You know, the majority does not rule. The majority doesn't rule. One with God is the majority, however, because that person has the truth. And we find in the age that we live in, it doesn't matter what the masses say. It don't matter how many people want to legalize sin. They want to legalize homosexuality or allow homosexual marriages within states. Many places have done that. It doesn't matter if they take it to a vote and the majority wins in favor of it. It is still wrong. There's still a man of God behind the pulpit somewhere saying that this is sin, it's wrong, you shouldn't do it. It don't matter how many people disagree. One with God is still the majority. We find 
All, uh, other things within our nation, we find abortion, a big issue. Many, many, many human beings slaughtered. It doesn't matter how many people have voted in favor of abortion. It is still wrong. And God still has someone somewhere saying that, look, you should not be killing our own people. We should not be killing babies. We find that it's still one with God as the majority. It doesn't matter how many people try to persuade you to go out and do with them what they want to do. It doesn't matter how much fun they say it is, even if they all agree that you have the time of your life. If it's wrong to do, it's wrong to do. One with God as the majority. You can stand against all of those people yourself. And know that you are the majority because you are with God. And that you are correct and that you have the real word of truth. Don't listen to what the mass is saying. If it doesn't line up with what God says, it doesn't matter how many people...